Greetings, Mr. Sutton here, bringing you the Pre-Cal Honors 4-1 Extra Practice Number 3 Solutions on Exponential Functions. On this one, we have the half-life of, I guess this is cesium-137. It's 30.2 30 years. Initial mass is, 100, or is 1 kilogram, rather. How much is left after 151 years? Um, so we're going to need the half-life formula for this one. We're going to need it for really all of the problems in this extra practice. So we've got AB to the T over K. And we are looking for how much is left. So we're looking for the value of F of T when we plug in 151. Our initial value here is going to be the 1 kilogram that we started with. And then the B value, it's half-life, so that's going to be 1 half. And then T, that's the 151. K is the half-life. It's how long we have to wait before we cut it in half. That's 30.2 years. And now let me just plug this into the calculator. So we've got 0 0.5 to the 151 divided by 30.2. And that's going to come out to 0 0.03125. So I'll just round that off to 0 0.031, and that's going to be in kilograms. On this problem, we have carbon-14, which has a half-life of 5,730 years. We've got a sample of fossilized wood that, when alive, would have contained 24 grams of carbon-14, now contains 1.5 grams. We want to know how old is the sample. Um, so basically, we're asking if we started with 24 grams of this stuff, how long would that take to decay to 1.5 grams? So since we're doing half-life, let's use the half-life formula. F of t equals AB to the t over k. And in this one, they're asking how old is the sample? So we're actually looking to solve for time, not some value after a certain amount of time. So if we're solving for t, that means we have to fill in values for all the other variables here. Uh, so what is this f of t then going to have to have a value of? Well, that's how much you want your sample to turn into. That's this 1.5 here. That's your target amount. And then the a value, the starting amount, is going to be this 24 grams of carbon-14 that you started with. b, that's the growth factor. That's going to be a 1 half. You're multiplying by 1 half each time. t is t. We don't know what it is yet. For k, that's the half-life time. Uh, so that's going to be the 5,730 years. And now we have to solve this for t. Well, one thing we can definitely do is get this 1 half exponential term by itself by dividing both sides by 24. 1.5 over 24, well, 3 over 24 would be 1 eighth. So this is going to be 1 over 16 if you want to reduce the fraction there. And there's lots of ways to solve this, but you can actually at this point just reason it out. If 1 half to something equals 1 over 16, what does that something have to have a value of? Well, 1 half to the fourth power would give you 1 16th. So that means that whatever this exponent is, t over 5730, that must have a value of 4. And now we can just multiply both sides by 5730 to figure out the value of t. Uh, so I am going to use the calculator for this part. So 4 times 5730 is going to give me 22,920 years. On this problem, we have a 64-gram sample of germanium-66, undisturbed for 12 and a half hours. At the end of that time, only 2 grams remained. We want to know the half-life of this material. So let's start with our half-life formula, AB to the T over K. And in this case, if we're looking for the half-life, we're looking for the K value, the thing you have to divide the time by. It's the amount of time you have to wait before you multiply by 1 half. So that means we have to fill in things for all the other letters here. F of t is going to be the amount that you had left, the remaining amount. That's going to be this 2 grams. A is going to be the amount you started with. That's the 64 grams. For B, we're multiplying by 1 half each time, so that's 1 half there. And then T, this is the amount of time you let it go for. That was 12.5 hours. We don't know K, so we're still doing divided by K here. Um, so in order to get to k, we have to first get this exponential term by itself. I can do that by dividing by 64. And I'm going to reduce this fraction just to make it a little easier. I can do most of this without a calculator. Um, so 2 over 64 is going to give me 1 over 32. And now if 1 half to something equals 1 over 32, what does that something 
have to have a value of? Well, 1 half to the fifth power would give you 1 over 32. So that means this 12.5 over k, whatever it is, it must have a value of 5. Now I can just use this to solve for k. So if I multiply by k and then divide by 5, I have 12.5 over 5. And let me just use the calculator to see what that comes out to. And it looks like that's going to give me a value of 2.5. And what units is that going to be? Well, the uh, T was in hours, so this is going to be 2.5 hours for the half-life. On this problem, if we have a half-life of 28.8 years, how long will it take a gram of strontium-90 to decay to 125 milligrams? Okay, so for this one, we're going to use our half-life formula, AB to the T over K. And if I'm asking how long, I'm solving for T, the time, so that means I have to plug in something for everything else. So this F of T, that's the target amount, the amount remaining of strontium. That's going to be this 125 milligrams. Um, now you have a choice to make here, depending on what units you want to use. If you use 125 here, you're going to have to use 1,000 for the A value, the starting amount of strontium, because one gram is 1,000 milligrams. Um, if you use one for that starting amount, you're going to have to use 0.125 for the f of t. So let's see what I did here. I went with 0.125. All right, so that means that I'm using an a value of 1. Now, there is an advantage to this. At some point, I'm going to have to divide by the a value. And dividing by 1 is easier than dividing by 1,000. So now our b value is going to be 1 half because it's half-life. That's what you're multiplying by each time. For the t value, we don't know that yet, so we'll just leave that as a variable. For k, the half-life itself is the 28.8. All right, uh, so let's clean this up a little bit. This one doesn't really make any difference, so I'm just going to forget about it. 0.125, I can actually turn that into 1 eighth, which will make it easier to solve a little bit more here without using a calculator. So if I have 1 half to some exponent equals 1 eighth, well, 1 half to what power would give me 1 eighth? Well, 1 half to the third would give me 1 eighth. So that means whatever the value of t is, this whole exponent here, t over 28.8, must have a value of 3. And now I just have to multiply by 28.8 uh, by 3 to get my t value. Now I will use the calculator for this. So 3 times 28.8 going to give me a value of 86.4. And that's going to be in years because half-life was in years. For this problem, we have... CO60, which I believe is cobalt, but I'm not really sure, not a chemist. They say that has a half-life of 5.3 years. If a pellet's been in storage for 26.5 years, uh, it contains 14.5 grams of this thing, how much was present when the pellet was put into storage? So this is a half-life problem, if half-life doesn't make it obvious. We have AB to the T over K for our starting formula. And in this case, we want to know how much was present when we put the pellet into storage. We want the starting amount. Um, so one way to do this problem is to solve for A, which means we're going to have to plug something in for all of these other values. So F of T, then, that's how much you were left with. And let's see here. It says uh, after the pellet was in storage for 26.5 years, we had 14.5 grams. So 14.5, that's going to be our F of T value. A, we don't know, so we'll leave that as A. That's the starting amount. B is what we multiply by each time. It's one half, because this is half-life. For T, that's the time we were in storage for. That was 26.5 years. And K is the half-life itself, which they said was 5.3 years. All right, so let's go ahead and solve this now. Um, so it just so happens that 26.5 divided by 5.3 is exactly 5, which is nice. Um, so we've got a times 1 half to the fifth equals 14.5. And uh, this is really, let's see, 1 half to the fifth, that's 1 over 32. So this is really a over 32 equals 14.5. So if I multiply by 32, I will get my starting value. And I'm just going to do this out on the calculator. So that gives me 464 and that's going to be in grams. For this problem, we have a 1 kilogram block of phosphorus 32 with a half-life of 14.3 days, stored for 100.1 days. And at the end of this time, we want to know how much was left. 
Okay, so if we're asking how much remains, um, first off, we need the half-life formula. So f of t equals ab to the t over k. How much remains? We're basically asking for the output of this function. So f of t, that means we're going to plug in stuff for a, b, t, and k. So let's see, the time involved here, we're going to be doing f of 100.1. That's the total time it was stored for. The a value, that's the amount of phosphorus you started with. Uh, it looks like you started with one kilogram. So let's put in one for A. For B, that's what we multiply by each time. That's one half, because it's half-life. T, the time in storage, again, was 100.1. K is the half-life itself, which is 14.3. And I'll just go to the calculator for this one. So plugging all that in, I really had just have 0.5 times all that stuff, giving me an output of, if I round that off, 0.008. And that's going to be in kilograms of phosphorus. On this problem, we have radon with a half-life of 3.8 days. After 7.6 days, 6.5 grams remain. What's the mass of the original sample? So let's use our half-life formula, AB to the T over K. In this case, the original sample's mass is the A value in all of this. So that means we have to plug in something for all the other unknowns. F of T, that's going to be the amount remaining. That would be the 6.5 they said here. For A, again, we don't know that, so we will leave that as a variable. B is one half, because this is half-life we're dealing with. For T, that's the amount of time we let it go. Uh, that was the 7.6 days. And K itself is the half-life, which was 3.8. Solving for A here, it's a little bit easier if you realize that 7.6 divided by 3.8 is exactly two. So if you're doing A times one half to the two, well, that's just really a times one-fourth, or a over four. And you could probably do this without a calculator. Uh, four times 6.5, that's going to be, let's see here, 26. So 26 grams. On this problem, we have a 0.5 gram sample of iodine-131, half-life of eight days. After 40 days, how much is left? So let's go to our half-life formula. We're basically looking for f of t because we're asking how much is left. So we got to plug in something for a, b, t, and k. So we're doing f of 40 because it's after 40 days, we want to know. 0.5 is the starting amount here. And then the b value is going to be 1 half because it's half-life. t is the amount of time that we're waiting. That's going to be the, the 40 days again. And k is the half-life itself, which is 8.0 or just 8 days. So on my calculator, I'm doing essentially uh, 0.5 times another 0.5 to the 40 divided by 8. And that's going to be, if I round this off, about 0 0.016 grams of iodine. For this problem, we have a half-life of sodium-25 that is one minute. Starting with a kilogram of this, how much is left after six minutes? So we need our half-life formula, AB to the T over K. A value, that's the starting amount, which was one kilogram. And we're plugging in six for minutes, so this is F of six we're doing. B value is one half, because we're dealing with half-life. The time, again, is six minutes. And the half-life itself, the K value, is one minute, so we're doing six divided by one. Um, so this is essentially just one half to the sixth power, which is one over 64, which as a decimal is about 0 0.016 kilograms here. For this problem, we want to know the half-life of PO214 if, after 820 seconds, a one gram sample decays to this other amount here. Um, so I need the half-life formula, AB to the T over K. And I'm solving for half-life. That's the K value. That means I need values for everything else here. F of T is the amount that's remaining after the decaying happens. That's this 0 0.03125 amount here. The A value is what you started with, which is one gram in this case. B is our half-life uh, multiplier, which is just one half. And then the T, that's the time that you actually spent waiting. That's 120. K we don't know, so we're going to leave that as K. And now that's what we're going to solve for. To make this a little bit easier, it'd be nice if I knew what 0 0.03125 was as a fraction. Let me look that up on my calculator. So on my calculator, I'm going to go to my math menu, and I'm going to turn this into a fraction, option one. 
So it turns out that's actually 1 over 32. So really, if I want to get to this k value, I need to find a way of expressing this exponent as another number. Well, 1 half to the what value would give you 1 over 32. We know that 1 half to the fifth power is 1 over 32. So I don't know what k is, but whatever it is, 820 divided by k must have a value of 5 for this thing to work out. So then if I have this equation, multiplying by k and dividing by 5, let's see what I get for my k value. So 820 divided by 5 is going to come out to 164. And this was half-life, so it's in time units, so that's 164 seconds for this.